What goes on on the animal side of things really mirrors what's happening on the human side. When certain medications are popular, that's what animals are getting into. And of course, right now, marijuana is, the cases numbers are just skyrocketing. Probably the toughest cases are vitamin D cases. Animals seem to like them, both dogs and cats, and they end up with hypercalcemia, and we treat these guys for, you know, several weeks. So it's expensive for owners, so unfortunately, a lot of these animals end up euthanized because people can't afford it. Welcome to VEX Presents. I'm Jamie Holmes, and I'm here today with Tina Wismer, uh, Dr. Tina Wismer, who is specializes in toxicology. And we're going to talk today about um, toxicological emergencies and emergency and critical care and what's trending and how technology has impacted it. Welcome. Thank you. Tell us a little bit about how you got into toxicology. Sure. So I started as an emergency veterinarian. You know, I worked in one of those nights, weekends, holidays type facilities. And so I actually saw the job at Animal Poison Control advertised on VIN. And I was like, tox, I love tox. I mean, you know, as an emergency vet, tox is great because you can make predictions what's gonna happen. You can give owners estimates on, you know, how long the animal's going to be there. And then I found out that it was actually an alternative residency to become boarded. So. I never imagined I would stay this long, but it's been 19 years now. Wow, 19 yeah. years with a specialty in toxicology. I mm -hmm. love it. So over this 19 years, you've got to have seen lots of changes. Yes. <laughs> so what's the biggest change you've seen in toxicology over that period of time? So what goes on on the animal side of things really mirrors what's happening on the human side. So when certain medications are popular, that's what animals are getting into. Mm -hmm. So when antidepressants like Prozac and Paxil were high, we got a lot of that. And then when now the ADHD medications, you know, and of course right now marijuana is, the cases numbers are just skyrocketing. Is that the biggest caseload that we're seeing? So it's not the most popular thing, okay. but it's definitely the fastest growing, um, and especially edibles and medibles, you know, they're much more concentrated. So we see more severe signs. That's pretty scary. So what is the most popular medication that animals are getting into these days? So on the dog side, the most common is ibuprofen. Okay. Followed closely by chocolate, of course. <laughs> uh, but yeah, ibuprofen, everybody has it in their house. Dogs love it. You know, they eat the entire bottle and they end up with, you know, ulcers and kidney failure. And cats? So with cats, cats are a little different. You know, it's hard to get cats to eat pills. Sure. Um, so most, Common intoxication with cats are actually insecticides. Mm -hmm. So whether it's something that's been sprayed in the home or putting the dog products on the cats, that's still the number one. Oh, that one's such a tough one. It's so painful to watch and we keep seeing it on social media and it seems like the word's getting out, but we're still seeing it. Yeah. Is there something different we can do about getting the word out about it? It's, you know, it's hard. Certainly, you know, trying to make sure that, you know, your clientele knows whether it's through newsletters and, you know, uh, media pieces is very important. Um, but, you know, I had a gentleman the other day, the package said on it, you know, six times do not use on cats. And he told me, well, I read that and it didn't say it would kill my cat. So sometimes it's just, you know, we do the right things and it just doesn't happen. Got it. Have you seen technology impact uh, toxicology cases or reported cases? It has. Um, you know, we have some uh, good articles out there trying to, you know, educate the public. So we're not seeing as many phone calls about, you know, easy things, the silica gel, the ant baits. Um, you know, our cases are definitely getting more difficult. We get, you know, emergency vets calling and, you know, there are these 12 medications in the house. Could any of them be causing the clinical signs? So it's made our jobs both easier and harder. Um, it's easier to get the information on medications, but um, yeah, we get more difficult things to deal with. Oh. What do you think the toughest case you've seen in the last 19 years? Oh, toughest case. So right now, probably the toughest cases are vitamin D cases. So once again, all the human doctors think, think people are vitamin D deficient. So they send home these huge 50,000 international unit vitamin D capsules. So animals seem to like them, both dogs and cats. 
and they end up with hypercalcemia and we treat these guys for you know several weeks mm -hmm. so it's expensive for owners so unfortunately a lot of these animals end up euthanized because people can't afford it with your years of experience what would you recommend what are your pearls of wisdom for someone who's interested in toxicology whether it's a RVT student um, an actual RVT or a doctor who's just looking for a different different alternative yeah so unfortunately there are not a whole lot of um, official toxicology residencies available anymore. Uh, I think there's only two or three in the country. However, um, the poison control centers actually are alternative residencies um, to become boarded. Um, and even on the human side, a technician who has a bachelor's degree, if they work in toxicology for a period of time, are eligible uh, to sit for at least the human boards. Um, so there are those ways. And if you're just interested, you know, there's great books and CE and a lot of things out there that you can help educate yourself and uh, make sure that you're the expert in the practice. What's your recommended text? What's your favorite book? That's a good question. So probably if you want something quick and dirty, um, I would go with one of the five minute consults. Okay. Um, if you are looking for something a little more in depth, uh, probably the Gupta Small Animal Toxicology has a lot more physiology in it. Excellent. I think those are great recommendations. And if you had one opportunity to get your message out to your veterinary colleagues, what's your message? My message is make sure to tell owners about chewable medications and keeping them away from pets, whether it's chewable NSAIDs, uh, you know, heart medications, uh, phenylpropanolamine, all of those. The chewable means they'll eat the entire bottle. So keep it away.